Okay, the next stage is uh, attaching the battery. So I've taken the, the cage off and um, what you've got to do is attach the battery to a point where you can still slide the battery pack off. So it's no good putting it down there. You can't slide the battery pack on and off. Um, so there's a key um, which locks that pin in the bottom which will prevent it from being moved. So make sure that's in the open position. And then you slide this whole section off the battery and that's the bit you've got to attach to the bike but obviously you've got to have enough room to slide this battery pack on and off so it does slide from the top down so what we'll do is we'll give this a trial fit and then work out if it's in the right position but it all depends on the size of this. I'm quite lucky I've got quite a long um, bottom bar there where some some are quite shallow especially on ladies bikes um, so you've got to decide if that's a good fit. There is other battery modules you can get ones this one fits here but you can get ones that go on the on the back if you haven't got a child seat you could have one on the back um, and there's one that even goes up in this top corner. Uh, so worth having a look at the different battery options um, when you do decide to come and buy. And it's a case of mounting this um, to those holes. Now my bracket is really low, so I'm, I might have to end up drilling this, which is what a lot of people have to do. Um, but we'll we'll see. I'll do a trial fit, and then I'll come back and show you. Uh, so I've got to the situation where I need to um, probably drill um, my frame and put um, some things called rib nuts in to hold the battery. My rib nut looks like that and I've got a special tool in the library that presses these in and what it'll do is it'll create a captive nut um, in the frame um, to allow me to um, screw something to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some masking tape on here, I'm going to tap it um, and then drill it um, uh, to put these uh, rib nuts in um, and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to get the battery held on. So I want to be able to try and use the water bottle holder down there, I don't want it too low, but then I don't want it too high that I can't slot the battery in. Uh, that looks about right. I'm going to tap the, just tap a little drill. I haven't got a hole punch, uh, a, a punch, sorry. Um, so I'm going to just tap it with an old drill that's pretty blunt. Okay, so we're going to drill um, these two holes so we can put the rib nuts in. Um, I'm going to use a, a, a simple drill, it's a single speed drill. Um, you just go very steady and uh, drill those out. Okay, so we've got our two holes um, ready for the rib nut. So this is basically a threaded insert that you insert and then you press and it folds in on itself and then it will hold it um, within that hole. So um, to install this rib nut what you do is you insert the insert and you screw it you screw it on opening it up a little and then when you squeeze these together that will form a seal in between the metal and create a captive nut. So that's what you're aiming for. Okay, let's see if this works. So I'm a bit, I haven't got much space here because of the clamp. Right, so 
I'm aiming to close this up. You know, it's only aluminium. What you don't want to do is over, over, over close it, because it will just snap. This is easy to use when you've got the room to take it out. Uh, so I had to kind of take the machine apart there to, to get that out. But there you are, there's a captive knot ready for something to be mounted to. So I'll do the same with the top. I'm probably going to have to do that one with a bolt because there's not enough room to get this tool in. Um, so I'll be back when I've done that one. So we've now got both cap nuts um, installed and what I need to do now is add this. I'll go ahead and install it. Okay, so that's the bracket put on. Um, and let's see if the bracket fits. There we go. Battery's installed. So now we've got to connect the battery up to the power. And I'll make sure it's switched off. And there's quite a lot of cable here. So it comes with these connectors, these are car connectors really, and they're not waterproof. So I will look at doing something with that eventually. But for now, I'm just going to um, uh, bend it in place. <coughs> and attach, attach it like that. So it's kind of on the other side, but it's gonna, it's gonna look like that. And I'll just tie wrap it all up. Okay, so that's all the battery connectors done. I'll just cut these off to tidy that up. And then we'll move on to the, the cabling for the controller on the front. So I'm going to mount the controller on the handlebars. So I'll knock all this down and then I'll show you that. So we're going to take the um, uh, the gears off and the brake levers because we don't need them anymore uh, and we'll have to put the other gear lever on this side um, so I'm just going to demount the derailleur cable and then that will give me the ability to pull that through it does look like I'm going to have to slide it off which means taking the, the grips off I was hoping I didn't have to do. Yeah. Okay, that's one off. Let's do the other side. I'll use the same technique on this side, it seems to work. The handlebar is clear. And now we'll put the computer on. So with this front kit comes these collars and these go on around there on both sides. These are a bit of a better design than the ones I saw on the kit on YouTube they were just like flexi and they just kept breaking so they've actually made it a two-part piece um, which is a lot easier to install
Okay, so got the thumb grip to go on one side. I think it's the side that doesn't have the. Yeah, that looks right. So it's the side that the old trailer for the uh, front would have gone. So what to do with all this cable way? How big do people somehow sound about the bows? You may get recumbents and all sorts using this, so I can see why they've made it a bit longer. So I'm gonna take this off and just so I can install the brake cable, <coughs> the brake levers. So these brake levers have got um, the sensors on it that plug into this. Now the reason you need these is that um, it's really for the throttle more than anything else, but it does also cut out the motor. If for whatever reason you put some pressure on the pedal and you've got the brake on, um, it won't do anything. Whereas if you've got pressure on it if, and you, you didn't have these installed, there is a likeliness that it'll try and move forward. Even, even though you've got the brakes on, I suppose. It wouldn't happen, but um, you might put some, you might damage the motor. So having these on, I think is worth doing. So I'm going to put them on anyway. And if they change the UK laws at some point, I can have the accelerator. I'll whack it back on. So I've just put a bit of water in these and hope, hope they go on. Now to the other side. So this one, we're going to have to put the brake lever and the gear changer on. So this is the replacement gear changer. So it's an underslung one. This seems to make sense. So that's it. Now I've just got to put the uh, cables all in. I want to go in that one. There we go. So I'll uh, work out what we're going to do with these cable excess. Probably tie them off like that. So I've moved the bike on a little bit, um, I've uh, done all the cabling, so that's uh, the replacement cable that's got the sheath all the way on the outside so it doesn't have to go underneath. Um, there's a lot of tie wrapping to do, um, so I suggest you buy some tie wraps. You want to make sure that the steering can turn either way, um, all the way, um, so leave enough free stuff to allow all the steering to turn with all the new cables. Um, so what I've got left to do is put the uh, chain set on. Um, so, well, just the um, the crank arms and the pedals. Um, I've put the magnet on here. There's a little arrow that points to where it should be. Uh, so just make sure it runs free and you've got nothing blocking anything around the wheels. I adjusted the brakes while I was, I was at it. Uh, make sure they all work properly with the new um, brake levers and so just about there and um, so uh, I'll, I'll put the other bits on I won't video that because they're, they're pretty self-explanatory you, you, you're just putting the, the bits on with a bit of talk um, and then um, the, the chain to go on and then we, we should be done so here's the finished product this is the full electric bike conversion I have actually managed to ride this bike about 14 miles and I'm very impressed um, so, just show you some of the things I've done, um, some of the cabling around here. This is the battery back all on. Um, down here, I am going to tidy this up eventually and probably make it a bit shorter. But this is the connection from the battery bank uh, to the motor, which is down here. Um, the sensors, 
plenty of tie wraps on them and to hold all the, the cabling in place. This is the new cable that goes to the derailleur, which has got an outer sheath all the way um, up to um, the new um, gear changer. Uh, these are the brake levers that have got the extra wire that goes to the back of the unit um, so they can sense um, when to put out the motor. And if we switch this on, you can see on there it shows 14 miles. Um, and over here is the quick functions which changes the, um, the motor um, to give you more um more of a boost basically so you can decide on how much based on how much energy you're putting in you want it to to, to deliver so at turbo um it's pretty much you don't have to do much um you know turning the pedals is almost enough um tor is pretty good you, you you're getting um still a bit of a workout um on tor and obviously it only goes up to 15.5 uh, miles an hour so once it reaches that you're on your own um, so, uh, if you do want it to keep providing some energy, you do have to keep it below 15.5 miles an hour. So, um, one of the things it's got here is, um, a light switch, which switches on the light on here. But if you buy the light kit, which I'm planning on putting on, um, it will actually turn, uh, the lights on the bike as well. So that'll save me having to charge, um, lights, um, that I've, that I've put on the bike. But yeah, I'm really impressed with how it feels. Um, the torque sensing is really good. Um, yeah, uh, and I've taken my son to school on it a few times and it, it so helps with that morning commute um, in terms of just making it a little easier. I'm still getting a workout, but it's nowhere near as difficult as, as it was with all the weight on the bike. So yeah, let me know what you think.